Hey everyone, it's Christine Lee Smith, analog photographer, and today we're here and we're going to be talking about darkroom chemicals for black and white process. Before we jump in, don't forget to hit subscribe and ring the bell to be notified every time I post a video. All right, let's do this. All right, guys, welcome to my darkroom. We are here today because I'm going to be talking with you guys about what chemicals we need for black and white process, just like these prints in the wash. Um, so for our purposes today, I'm going to be using the trays that are set up in our sink to talk to you about what chemicals you need to develop black and white and what type of mixture process they require. So as we come over here, you'll notice there are three trays set up. The first one, the white one, is the developer, the next one is our stop bath, and finally our fixer. So each of these is required to make black and white prints in the dark room. So let's talk about our developer. So today I'm using Ilford Multigrade Developer. It's a really great basic all-purpose but really smooth developer, giving great tones in your black and white prints. It's liquid and so it means it's easy to mix up for your tray use. When you get a developer, make sure you check out what if it's liquid or powder, as that's going to determine how easy or how complicated it becomes to mix up a batch for processing. For this liquid developer, like most liquids, you just need a graduated cylinder like this with some markings on milliliters or ounces. I'm just going to use this clear one, which gives me some milliliter markings that we're going to use to follow the directions on our developer. So I'm going to use this side of uh, the pitcher, and you'll notice that for um, this mix, I'm going to use about 100 milliliters of the chemical, that's the concentrate in the tub behind me, and then I'm going to fill the rest of the pitcher all the way up with water till I hit 1,000 milliliters, which is that top line. Notice it's not the top of the pitcher, but the top of the milliliter markings. The reason I'm going to do this is because the instructions on top of the chemical tell me that it is a dilution of 1 to 9. What this means is I need one part chemical, which is the straight concentrate, plus 9 parts water, equaling a total of 10 parts, hence ending at 1,000 milliliters. Next, we're going to go ahead and talk about stop bath. This is what ends the development process, and it is essential when making black and white prints. For our stop bath, it's a different ratio, so we need to pay attention to that on all of the containers. The stop bath I'm using today is the Arista Indicator Stop Bath. It's just a basic um, stop bath for black and white processing. Um, and let's go ahead and take a closer look here at this label. Always double check, make sure you have the right chemical in hand. And then always double check until you're used to it what the dilution is. So this is one part stop bath concentrate with 31 parts water. Now that could be tricky if I were trying to do it in milliliters, but all I need to do is switch my pitcher around to the ounces and I have an easy one to 31 ratio. So I'm gonna end up putting in one ounce of the stop bath concentrate and then fill it up to a total of 32 ounces with fresh water from the tap. All right, so we're gonna be talking about fixer next, but before I jump in, just to note that fixer is not meant to go down the drain once it's expired unlike the other two chemicals we've already talked about. So when you're done with fixer, do not put it down the drain. All right, so when we look at our fixer and how we get it mixed, um, first I wanna let you guys know I'm using the Arista Universal Fixer today for black and white process. Um, it's a real basic and great fixer that will preserve your prints and make sure that the image doesn't change um, after your exposure and time in the developer. First thing to notice after that is that our Dilution is different here yet again. We're going to have four parts um, water to one part of the chemical. And again, it's a liquid base, so super easy to mix um, with a pitcher and just some fresh running water. So in review, again, we're working with the three main chemicals for black and white process. And you'll notice that in each of the trays, they're not overly full. Um, this extra large developer tray was um, two pitchers full. The stop is only a single thousand milliliter pitcher, as is the stop is only a thousand milliliter pitcher full. And these trays, the red ones, are 16 by 20. It's illustrated by this 8 by 10 white tray. 
One last note for today is about tongs. You're going to be using these probably shortly after you mix up your chemicals, and it's really important to make sure that your tongs stay with the tray you've assigned them to. For my purposes, these ones are labeled bamboo tongs. They're inexpensive and easy to get a hold of. Do note they hold chemical though, they are absorbent, so you want to make sure to wash them thoroughly after each use, as cross-contamination can happen if they move from tray to tray. All right, you guys, so thanks so much for being here for my intro to what chemicals you use in a black and white darkroom and getting started. Again, those chemicals that you will need are a developer, a stop bath to stop the development process, and then the third and final chemical you need is a fixer, which makes everything light safe. So um, <clears throat> if you're getting started in your darkroom, don't forget to order all three chemicals before you get started. And if you have any questions about what to order or what's good, go ahead and post them in the comments below and I'm happy to chat with you about that. Um, otherwise, don't worry about spending too much money at the beginning or getting too um, picky about what you get. Just get started. That's the most important part is to begin. So, so anyway, it's been great being here with you guys again. My name is Christine Lee Smith. I'm an analog photographer and welcome to the wonderful world of analog photography. Don't forget to hit subscribe and ring that bell to get notified on upcoming videos. And let me know what you want to see next. Post it down in the comments. All right, see you guys next time.